and I thought, well, it would be good to present an instrument, but also to, to let you listen to the instrument. So I would like to start with listening to the Blockwerk as it's still present in Alkmaar, together with the pedal trumpet in a trumpet by Jacob Pretorius, one of the favorite students by, uh, from uh, Jan Pietersson Zweling. And well, the special thing with, with this recording is that we didn't use the motor, but that my colleague uh, did uh, escal count the three bellows in Alkmaar. Yeah, we were talking about organs in the Netherlands, and as I said before, the instrument which is stemming from Utrecht is the oldest preserved organ, but this is the oldest soundable organ in the Netherlands at the moment, and very special is the composition of the blockwerk. I will later come on that, because there are almost no repetitions in it, and that makes this kind of sound also very good for polyphonic music. And well, if you have seen the case, you also see that the gallery was enlarged in later time and the pedal trumpet you heard is positioned here. I always call that the black box, so you don't, you don't see it. And upstairs this pedal trumpet is extremely direct and loud, but downstairs it sounds like a renaissance trombone and as you heard it, it fits very well. And the, this registration, in fact, the pedal was originally always pulled down to the grid. And you heard what Van Kovelis called the principal. And Van Kovelis himself, when he made the, the organ in Franeke, and uh, Johan has told about Franeke a little bit, well, there Van Kovelis remarked that the pedal trumpet should be used together in the principal. So that was the, the main use. Well, this instrument we have spoken about, uh, one picture from another side. And, well, if we compare the Alkmaar organ with other preserved instruments from the time just before or just after, we see this is Riesum, 1457. This is the organ in Oosthuizen, where we don't know exactly the date and we don't know exactly if the form in which the instrument is preserved is the original shape and the organ in Krevers. They all have a flat case and if we then compare, for example, with this case, this is a very important Van Kovelis organ, which is now in the Catholic Church in Jutvaas. The, the pipework you see is not by Van Kovelis, it's Maarschalkerweert from the 19th century, so that's very different from the original. And we have a painting from the original situation. It was in the Nieuwezijdskapel, 
And this was the instrument where Antoni van Noort started his career in Amsterdam. And there you see this, this semicircle, how creative Van Kovelens was compared to his colleagues. And well, I think you all know the prospect of the Innsbruck Hofkirche, which is also flat, and that is an instrument which was built 50 years after Alkmaar. So it was really a revolution to make such a prospect with two, uh, two round towers and um, a pointed tower in the middle, and the, the mirror fields you see at the sides, they are non-speaking. One of the things I'm still a bit doubting about are the small uh, intermediate uh, fields. Now the, the, the Dove 6 is made uh, by Jacobus van Hageweer, renewed in 6051. And I could imagine that there were also mirror fields originally, but we cannot prove that. But it is a bit my intuition. Well, just to give you an overview of what happened to the instrument. So Jan van Kovens built it in 1511 as a single manual instrument with eight stops. And very special is that he divided, it's a six foot case, so we have exactly the compass which was presented here by Johan. Starting on F, F, G, A up to A2. And A2 is also the top note of all the, all the keyboard works by Jan Peterson Sveling. So I always say to people, if you play a piece by swaying and you have the, the, the high A2 on such a keyboard, it's a very special feeling. And we forget that if we play it on later instruments, what, 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 what meaning this, this note has. And in Alkmaar, apart from the sound, you also have, have this very, very specific feeling. Klaas Willemsson uh, from Haarlem was a pupil of Van Kovelens and he made uh, an enlargement with the Brustwerk, which was made behind the, the, the manuals, so it's in, in fact closed. Upstairs it sounds, sounds very direct, but downstairs it's like an echo work. And his son, Alad Klaasson, added the pedal trumpet. And we can be very happy that the resonators of this pedal trumpet are still by Alad Klaasson. And then I think the most important change was by Jan Jacobson van Lin. He changed the Brustwerk specification a little bit, but he also did some modifications on the composition of the mixture and the sharp. Well, then you see <coughs> small changes and the restoration, which are for this moment not so important. So here you have a view um, with the in the grate. So you see the lower chest. At the, at the back side, the trumpet 8, or the trumpet 6, and the upper chest. And it's extremely important to realize what we have here is the, what the Germans call the Bolenlade. So the, the chest is out of one piece of wood, and that <coughs> this is the original, the two original chests by uh, Jan van Kovens. Mm -hmm. That we have also the chests completely preserved. And here you see the, 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 the conductors. So the upper chest is reserved for the flute work, and on the lower chest is, so to say, the blockwerk sound. And well, as you has, have seen also in the presentation I did with Christoph, uh, that uh, the flute choirs are most of the time combined with a reed or with two reeds. It's a bit strange that we have the trumpet not on the upper chest. Because later, out of this upper chest, Mr. Niehoff developed his so-called Bovenwerk, which was a work with flutes, only one principle, a cymbal, a trumpet, and a zinc. And here we have on the upper chest the whole pipe 8, an open flute 4, and a C flat, C flat 1, 1 third, probably an invention by Jan van Govens. And the interesting thing is that on the place uh, of the C flat, Flanderop discovered when the organ was restored, it is always a fantastic moment to, to look more inside the instrument, that at the place of the C flat one, one third, there were three gaps originally, and then they were, were made, they were closed. So probably Van Kovens first planned to make a symbol there, uh, a Rauschen symbol, so a quarter sixth symbol, and that is also the, the normal symbol to use with the flute choir. And that he later 
during the building that he, he decided to change it. And then we think that Van Govens invented this sifflet, and that this, this is the oldest sifflet, and from the open flute and the sifflet, um, more or less 50% uh, of the pipework is old. And the, the best preserved uh, flute stop is the whole pipe, which is, uh, there's only one pipe in you, but the whole rest is in Van Govens' uh, pipework. And yeah, the fact that the, the, the trumpet is positioned on the lower chest is very simple. On, in a, a six-foot case, there's not enough space <laughs> for the resonators. So that was very practical. Well, here you have an overview over the specification. So you see, again, the compass. As I said, the dove was renewed by Jacobus van Hagen here. The, the first plan to make the, 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 the large organ was to unify the two choir organs. And it could be that they, they started with that. The, 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 the making of the big organ took many years because the first organ builder, Mr. Eichhout, died. And that, van, of, uh, that uh, Jacobus van Hagen had to renew the dove, the, the principle. But another reason could, of course, be that the dove was, was not, not uh, a tin pest or uh, the, the lead disease. So that is, that is now uh, 6051. And that was a discovery also during the restoration that the koppel dove, there, was one, there is one rank of the koppel dove, of course, original. But they, they, they found that the koppel dove from a certain point had two ranks and in the top octave even three ranks. And, well, imagine if you play with principle 8 and 4, or, or koppeldoof and doof together, and you play the accompaniment <coughs> low, and you play in the top of the keyboard a solo, then the strange effect is that you have five ranks in the right hand, and two ranks per key in the left hand, and that downstairs people sing, is playing on two manuals. <coughs> Another aspect is, that if you take the whole block back, so the sound you, you just heard, and you count all the choirs that you have in the bottom, on the lowest F, you have 17 ranks, and in the top, you have 17. So there is enormous increase of doublings, and I will later show you the composition of that ensemble. Well, I talked already about the, the upper chest and the stops, then we have the Brustwerk, only the Quinta Dane of Klaas Willemsson has been preserved. And Mr. Van Lien, apart from that, he changed a little the composition of the, of the mixture and the sharp. He also uh, is responsible for two stops, the Conical Flute 4, which was after, after 1625, by the way, on the great. And the Octave 2 is from his hand, and the Octave 1 is a reconstruction by Flentrop and then the pedal trumpet. And, uh, well, you see the pitch, which is now 427, and it, it, it can be that the pitch was indeed also, uh, like the big organ is still on 415, that was also the pitch where Van Hagerbeer always tuned his instruments, that also this instrument was originally 415. Well, here you see in the upper part the composition of the of the, in fact, the complete blockwerk involving the, the, the dove and the koppel dove. And the only thing you see is that, that high choirs are, are, are falling away as higher you come, but there is no, there is only one place, and that is from C to, uh, to C sharp, the first C, C sharp. There is a small jump, and for the rest, there is never uh, that you have ta 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 in if you play a scale, uh, which is of course very disturbing. I remember that I was skipping with Harald Vogel, of course, and Harald said, if you play polyphonic music, never use the plenum. And then I did, Harald, but you, you know Alkmaar, you know in Alkmaar, it's, it's perfectly. And I always compare it, uh, if, if we think of the big works of Johann Sebastian Bach, Prelude and Fugue, Toccata and Fugue, is always the subtitle Pro Organo Plenum. Well, for Sweden, 
his fantasias are his large work where he shows his abilities of counterpoint. And I think one opportunity on this organ is to play that music also in, in the Blockwerk sound. Well, here downstairs I've also made the distinction with Innsbruck, how many choirs, and also with the Utrecht Nicola. Here another view on the upper chest. A very special element is, now you can, can see the, the whole pipe, the chimney flute, uh, a bit better. And you see that the heads, you can't move them to tune. So it's very hard to tune this, this, this stop. And most of the time, it's not necessary to tune. So one of the, of the, of the, of the lessons is tune as, as uh, in, no, not, not very often, because you can only do it with the, to change the beards a little bit. And this is the Brustwerk. The Brustwerk chest is also preserved. It's a chromatic uh, chest. And you see it's very small. And this is then the pedal, and the pedal trumpet. And perhaps we can, we can have one element of music again. An example of the, the well-preserved whole pipe of Van Coverens. And you hear Adieu mes amours of Josquin de Pré in the uh, Fridolin Zietje tablature. And interesting, this tablature is dating one year younger than the organist. It's from 1511, uh, 1512. overview about uh, the two keyboards, it's good to realize that when the Brustwerk was initiated by Klaus Willemsson in the beginning, there was just one single manual. We have still such a situation in Norden, where two works are connected to one manual, so that you had a ventil to close one department. And, um, well, you see how it looks, uh, a manual starting with F, for guest organists, it's always difficult to play in the, in the first octave because if they look, they are lost, I always say. So I always advise, please don't look because then you will make mistakes. And in the top, uh, the missing of the, of the G sharp is of course very obvious. And the pedal has the compass from F to C. And there is one specific element in it that the C sharp and the G sharp in the trumpet are not having a resonator. And uh, there are some other instruments from in the Van Koverlin's Niehoff school also having these notes not. And we think that also Sweening on his Niehoff organs because the small organ in the Oude Kerk was very similar to the organ in Alkmaar. And um, what is very nice that the lowest manual, which is now the Brustwerk manual, that was the original manual by Jan van Koverlin's. And you see also the fronts of both manuals. So this is the Van Koverlens. The covering is, of course, new. This is from 4041 by Flentrop, renewed. But it's very special to play on this keyboard because the, the scaling of the octave is a little wider than we are used to. And uh, it's very, very special. And another view on the keyboard, and here you see a, a design made by Willem Haakman Wagenaar, that is a, a, a phase where the, the gallery was not completed, and it's of course a, a bit hypothetical, but that the, the, the pedal trumpet is hanging in a separate case to the right side, 
a demonstration of the of the Dove Six with the Salve Regina of Arnold Schlick. And I have a special idea with that. I show you first one Schlick verse, and then you will hear the composition of Bernard Foucault, specially made for this instrument in 2005 for our competition. Yeah, finally, some, some remarks on how to use such an instrument. And well, you can hear in this example that the, the lead pipes enhance the very vocal aspects of, of this organ sound. And these qualities ensure the playing of motets and madrigals, uh, original composed for choirs, that they work on an instrument like this extremely well. And well, you have heard this uh, intabulation. And there are many important composers. Uh, Andres mentioned already Antonio de Capathon. Uh, it was interesting for me to read all the names of the Van Covenant's organs Capathon visited in the Netherlands. And it reminds me, and I saw, that he was not in Alkmaar. And why not? Well, last year we celebrated that the Spanish army was trying to get Alkmaar. But they didn't manage. <laughs> so I think Cabezon was waiting outside the walls of Alkmaar to see the Van Gogh's organ. But unfortunately, the Alkmaars were so strong. And otherwise, he had taken Van Gogh's to advise for the <laughs> instrument. In... <laughs> and uh, another aspect of, um, of making music with such an organ is, is the alternative practice. And we have, of course, one problem in Alkmaar. The church is not a church anymore. And since uh, 1578, it was not a Catholic church, but a reformed church. So the organs were not used in that way. But I once experienced this uh, Capella Pratensis. Uh, they were singing a mass by Heinrich Isaac. And we completed that with organ verses from the same mass by Hans Buchner. And that gives a fantastic uh, dialogue effect. And I also believe that such an old instrument with such an old sound is not only very good for making very old music. And many people say, oh, all the organs with all this old music. But that it also inspires good composers for making new sounds on these instruments. And uh, I would like to, to demonstrate at Jesum from Salve Regina of Andres. Last year in the competition we had another modern composition by Andries van Rossen, one liner, uh, and that also worked very well. The audience in the final of the competition was really enthusiastic about the new music on this very old instrument. 
And yeah, I think also for, we have the luck in Amsterdam that we can also teach on the organs in Alkmaar. And if you teach swelling on such an organ, yeah, it inspires you. And well, I think everybody these days also experienced that such an organ quality is, is, is learning us so much if we are open for that. And I'm also convinced that if we have success in recreating a Crinon organ here, that it will inspire not only Leuven, but Belgium and, and the rest of Europe as well. So thank you for your attention.